It's sunset over Miami Bay. Not far away from these peaceful views, in a parking lot, 20 tough guys get geared up. These police are preparing for a dangerous operation, a raid on a drug dealer's house. Here in Miami, the drug traffickers are increasingly unpredictable. Single family, single story dwelling. Gonzalez is gonna take the one four and then ultimately adjust himself if necessary. Cue the same thing, you get the one two corner. Object is a black male, um, 31 subject. Just keep that in mind. He's supposed to have several guns inside the house. Any other questions? Hey, no? I know you guys are tired. Let's sharpen up. Let's go. Do it! Lieutenant Joel Bello is responsible for this operation. We keep ourselves open to anybody that's in that house is a potential threat to our team. This elite unit is the Miami SWAT team. Dressed in head-to-toe body protection, like soldiers, they climb aboard these armored vehicles. Throughout the journey, the men stand holding on to the outside of the truck. This way, they'll be able to jump right into action immediately upon arrival. A strange spectacle in the middle of the city. They give the impression of a country at war. The house they're aiming for is at the end of this street. Will the dealer retaliate to the police raid? Terrified, a man at the entrance of the house gets down on the ground as the police arrive. They unceremoniously drag him away. In just a few seconds, both the gate and the door are broken open. But in a dramatic turn, two individuals escape from the back of the house. Subject running! Let your guys know! Lieutenant Bello informs the other police units on site. The two suspects won't get far. They were arrested just a few meters away from the house. Inside, two frightened children and their mother give themselves over without protest. The dealer, the object of the arrest warrant, is also arrested without any objection. But if you want to arrest me, arrest me, take me in, and all that, let me get a lawyer and all that sort of Inside, the discoveries made by Lieutenant Bello seem to suggest that he was indeed at the head of the drug trade. A gun ready to go that he obviously uses here for, for protecting his, uh, his narcotics hole. And as we keep walking through the house, this is something that was recovered uh, afterwards in the attic. We do an attic search as well. This is a sawed-off shotgun. A magazine for an AK-47 or an SKS, uh, some of the money and some of the narcotics. At the back of the house, they even found a sniper rifle. The detectives will submit that firearm for ballistics and, and determine whether it's been used in any shootings or homicides. So he can do a lot of damage with that. It's 10 p.m. and the SWAT police, exhausted, go home after a long day of three operations. And alongside them, we will discover a hidden side of Miami. <laughs> Miami is one of the most idyllic cities in America. With its tropical climate, you can sunbathe all year round on the endless beaches surrounded by turquoise waters. In the city center, there are magnificent Art Deco buildings, like these. Very close by, on the beach side, is the realm of the show-offs. An extensive city with two and a half million inhabitants, of which three quarters are of Hispanic origin. Many come here from nearby Cuba, 
Here, Spanish is the second language. No, no, tranquilo, tranquilo. A dynamic city where it's possible to make a lot of money and live in gorgeous villas with your feet in the water. A city where people like to advertise their success and to party. But the city also has a completely different side. This is the one that SWAT Lieutenant Joel Belo will show us. Not far from Colombia, Miami has been the port of entry for cocaine coming into the United States for a long time now. Right now we're going over the, uh, the Miami River, major entryway for, uh, for narcotics back in the 80s. Nowadays, the city is no longer a main trafficking point for the transport of cocaine but it is corrupted by the activity of a multitude of small dealers. Uh, just recently, they've had a, a string of shootings uh, in conjunction with some, some drug activity in the area. They have to retaliate on each other. In fact, the number of homicides has reached new heights in Miami, 217 last year. Police search warrant! Police search warrant! Miami police search warrant! Facing these criminals, an elite police unit, the SWAT team. They head up the war against drugs, but not only that. In the event of a terrorist attack in Miami, they are the first in line. Over-equipped and over-trained, they've made an exception and allowed our cameras to follow them during these weeks. But crime in Miami takes many different forms. We also followed a specialized squad working against car theft, a crime which is a massive phenomena in the city. Yeah, bro, it looks like a bullet hole. These very present crimes have become almost a spectacle here, which has caught the attention of minor news mercenaries, like this cameraman, ready to take any risk to make it into TV news. And then I see with my elbow and I listen to my scanners like this, doing 80 miles an hour. Riding along specialized units, diving into the heart of crime in Miami. Today, the SWAT team is preparing to intervene in the northern district of one of the poorest areas in the city. An area with lots of drug trafficking and regular shootings. 20 SWAT team members are positioned in the parking lot of the local police station under the authority of Lieutenant Belo. As with all their operations, they've come with their impressive vehicles, vehicles specially designed for them. And as you can see, it's got a very solid uh, foundation and it's been built very solid. So this is gonna stop pretty much everything we're gonna come in contact with out of here. It's even equipped with a gun tower for an elite shooter. It's a stable platform. That officer is just dedicated to providing protection for the team as we approach that final, that final location. They use these vehicles to open the way thanks to this ramming truck. Both the Bear and the Bearcat have a battery ram that we can attach in the front to mitigate doors. Uh, and on top of that, it has an injector system that we can deploy gas through that system as well. Uh, gives us a great advantage into getting into some of the structures that are heavily fortified. And today, the SWAT team are going to need all of their force. They must arrest a well-established dealer in the area who sells crack, cocaine, and marijuana. We have plenty of room to go south on The convoy sets off. A police car opens up the route for them. They get down from the truck 30 meters from the house and follow this route so they will not be spotted. Nothing is left open to risk. Even the trash is checked. These two strong men try in vain to attack the door with a mallet and a crowbar as the metal gate resists much more than anticipated. During these long seconds, the dealer could escape or even more dangerously arm himself. Hammer, 
The door finally gives in. What will they find inside? The dealer, overwhelmed by the police's force, is overpowered. The acad I mean, academics, like I told them, He'll now be interrogated by these narcotics officers who are wearing masks. This one's got more room. The SWAT team's work is done. Inside the truck, tension subsides. The group relaxes. As you can see, once the operation is over, these guys go from being uh, completely serious to their joking manner again. They just finished this war, and they have one more coming up. And uh, humor and laughter is something that makes a day go by. Too, man. But the atmosphere quickly becomes serious again at debriefing time. Their slowness in breaking down the door could have been dangerous. If you don't fuck around with that tool, if he opens up with any type of weapon system, you're going to catch all of it. So it's better to be smart, all right, and start working that tool, you know, with some finesse, because the longer you take, the longer you're exposed. But okay. this time they were lucky, and the operation was a success. We, we overwhelmed them quickly. We split the, 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 the search. Uh, it was short in the, on the right side, and then we went into the bedroom where we got the subject. All things considered, it went, you know, smooth. Good job. The SWAT team have finished for the day, but they stay on alert 24 hours a day. The SWAT team headquarters is located outside the center of Miami in this office-filled area. The building accommodates the elite unit's vehicles and its 30-man team. With 19 years of service, Troy is one of the eldest. He takes us to visit an area normally inaccessible to common mortals, the SWAT armory. This old office used to be an old bank, um, bank building. So what you're looking at here is uh, the vault that they used to have. And to the left, we have a variety of guns. We have shotguns, we have machine guns. On the right, you see all of our chemical agents' weapons. In the next room, there are hundreds of boxes of ammunition, while there are only 30 men in the SWAT team. As you're looking to the right and to the left, this is where we keep all of our ammunition. This used to be the old money vault. As you can see now, this is what we, this is our equivalent of money, which is rounds. We have over 100,000 rounds. This is just in case, obviously, if something was big was to happen, we have a, a, a surplus of ammunition. And it should be said that on top of this, each member permanently keeps a pistol and two rifles with him. So what's the purpose of creating this elite unit, armed to the teeth? The SWAT team was not created in Miami, but in Los Angeles. In 1965, the police force was facing significant race riots. To cope with this, they created an over-equipped and over-trained unit inspired by the Army, the SWAT team. Special weapons and tactics. Progressively, other police forces would create SWAT teams, also to fight against serious crime. In Miami, this would be in 1974. So what you see here to your right and left, uh, this is what we call the Hall of Fame. And you can see just by the, how old some of these pictures are from the discoloration of the actual photographs. They've been around for quite some time. So those are almost like the founding fathers of uh, the SRT unit. And the result, it's what we're here today. We have, the, the, I think, one of the best teams. Over the years, the SWAT team has increased their delicate operations. Like in 97, at the time of the assassination of famous fashion designer Versace, the unit besieged the home of the killer, which ended with him committing suicide. You're looking at right here, SWAT team officers make their move toward the area where gunshots were heard. These missions sparked Troy's interest in the career. You know, they repel out of helicopters, they repel off of buildings, they, they, they kick in doors, they grab subjects, they have the best equipment, just pure adrenaline from start to finish. Adrenaline, but also intervention tactics, which they practice each week. Tactics they never stop working to improve. It's good on this. <laughs> Here they do an exercise for a hostage-taking situation. Bad guy's down. He's secure, but now we have injuries all over the place. And we know that this is a this is a, a clean room. This will be our casualty collection point. But beyond theory, it's practice that they work on the most. A few kilometers from the SWAT HQ in this small green area is where the elite police come to do their training. Troy has hundreds of operations under his belt, 
so he is one of the best qualified to pass on his experiences. All right, guys, hey, Platon, grab your stuff. Hey, let's gear up and uh, let's start. Troy will run the training session. These men have the same equipment as the U.S. Army. As you can see, it is the Colt Commando. This is our this is our primary weapon that we use to make entrance out of these structures. TV, a lot of the, the military uses this type of weapon. Moving right along to our regular gear. Obviously, we have our ballistic helmet that we use. And this is our vest. You're going to see our medical kit, obviously our communications. And we also have a gas mask. In total, almost 30 kilograms of equipment. They also have this grenade at their disposal, this flashbang. These explode with lots of noise and light, which helps them neutralize the target for a few moments. She hasn't ran in a while. She almost died. I almost died yesterday. No. She almost died. Um, just at least one mag handgun yeah. and a couple mags M4. The SWAT team will move around in this full-size house replica. Exercise of the day to neutralize the criminals hidden inside who are armed and threatening to open fire. Troy places targets around the place to represent the criminals. Now, unknown where they're going to be located, so what am I doing with these? I'm going to strategically put them in places where you will encounter um, subjects when you enter into the side of a structure. An example, an example, sitting on a chair um, behind a desk. The exercise begins. Okay, so what he's going to do now, he's going to take a quick look, which is going to take a split second, and then he's going to go and he's going to pick a side. Troy teaches his men the art of protecting one another. As I'm crossing this threshold right here, and he's going to cover my right side. So as I'm walking, he's going to cover my right side, and then I'm going to be good. So now all I have to worry about is this, and my guy's going to cover the flank. So that's basically the concept of, of room clearing. It's all about covering angles and covering your flanks. A progression is made with extreme concentration. They got to see, they got to identify the subject, identify the threat, and take the shot. And all that is within seconds. We move on to the practice. Move. The green laser allows them to aim at the target. The SWAT team, like all police in the U.S., are permitted to open fire much more freely than most police in Europe. As soon as a weapon is pointed at them, but also if they believe that a concealed weapon is going to be used. Index, put them on safe. As you can see, they did an excellent job. As you're looking at from the, the doorway to here, it's about 10 yards, give or take, and they all hit center mass. Let's rewind again. They regularly repeat these exercises multiple times each year so that these movements become automatic. For the SWAT team, training is very necessary in order to deal with increasingly difficult situations. In the US, mass shootings are more and more common in universities, schools, and churches. In 2015 alone, 475 people were killed in mass shootings. Today at the University of Miami, the police are going to take part in an exercise. You wanna fuck with me? You wanna fuck with me? I see you. Where the fuck is Tony? Where the fuck is Tony? The scenario is simple. Two shooters are spreading terror on campus. Normal policemen step in first of all. You got, you got a guy right there. They free some of the hostages and neutralize one of the shooters. But the second shooter is hiding in the office. The SWAT team now takes control. A team surrounds the area. They progress with caution and search every room. 
The shooter is hiding at the end of the corridor. The SWAT team advances, trying to force him out of hiding. Gunfire begins. Subject down. This elite unit intervenes in the most sensitive situations and also deals with drug traffickers. But Miami is also the setting for another kind of crime. In this city of two and a half million inhabitants, there are also many armed robberies, raids, and assaults. The news is also a media spectacle, and certain people make a living from it. In this downtown parking lot, a strange nocturnal animal waits in his car. Rafael Storace spends hours listening to the police radios with dozens of scanners. He's on the lookout for news, to film events in action and then sell his images to local television channels. Here we see the type of footage he gets. The police arrest a young man. He's just killed his stepfather with a knife. And also this shooting during which the police shot down two men. Well, I try to give the TV stations what they want. And the TV stations, they want really dramatic video. They want to see people on the ground just been shot that are bleeding. They want to see car chases. They want to see houses on fire with flames coming out of the roof. It's 11 p.m. Rafael begins his rounds, listening to 14 radio channels while driving. It's an art. So I'm always paying close attention for the different codes that I'm hearing on my scanners. For example, 30 is a shooting, uh, 29 is an armed robbery, and a uh, fire is a um, 49. After 30 minutes, the first adrenaline rush of the evening. Shit. Cops asking for help. Well, it sounds very juicy. I think he's chasing someone on the foot. Rafio puts the pedal to the metal, and with a radio in hand, he grips his steering wheel. So then I steer at my elbow, and I listen to my scanners like this, doing 80 miles an hour. The risks are part of the job. An intoxicated man is causing havoc. He's refused to be arrested. He's injured a police officer before fleeing the scene. Got him at gunpoint now. The escapee's been arrested, but the police officer's not been seen to. I need rescue immediately for the officer. The officer is injured, and they're calling for rescue on the three, which means that it's a severe priority. Upon arrival, the police officer is already in the ambulance. Rafio follows the procession to the hospital, and he manages to catch footage of the police officer, head bandaged, entering the emergency room. Yeah, he looked like he's pretty messed up. Uh, the way his head was all wrapped up like that, uh, it's not a good thing. OK, good, I got, the, I got the money shot. Let's get out of here, because we're not supposed to be here. But in order for the television channels to buy the footage, they must also have details of the event. So Rafael returns to the scene of the crime. TV stations always like a lot of police cars in my shot. So I'm going to try to get a shot of these police vehicles here before they move them away. Rafio then goes to gather the news. Good to see you as always, sir. How's the officer doing, man? I guess it happened inside this Habitat residence place. Probably some, something like, it started simple, like, like maybe, a, maybe a drunk. Probably intoxicated, most likely. Wow, well now he's in deep shit. <laughs> Work for them almost every single night, and uh, I always have a good relationship with them. You know, when you show them respect, then they show you respect back. And it's something that's very important doing what I'm doing. It helps me get um, information. And before leaving, Rafio doesn't miss a detail. The shoes of the culprit, for example, are lying on the ground. Hey, 
there's a lot of stuff going on. And when, it, when it's like this, this early, it's going to be a good night, I think, man. It's 3 a.m. and Rafio takes a break. Definitely tired tonight. Got to get some energy drink, some food so I can keep on going. An energy drink and a hot meal to go. He eats his meal in the car and listens to the radio so he won't miss any potential action. His radio covers a radius of 100 kilometers and is strategically positioned. Well, the reason why I choose this location for my break is because, see that overpass right there? That's the expressway that I can go right away to get wherever I need to go as soon as I hear something happening. Rafio knows all the tricks of his job. He's been at this for 12 years, and he's rather pleased about being assigned to the city of Miami. I'm relentless and being smart and being fast. I just got rid of them by beating them all the time, uh, never taking a day off, and uh, they just got tired of me. A few seconds later, the action begins again, and this time, it'll be spectacular. <laughs> Armed robbery subject is. He's, he, he's, he's fleeing. It's a, it's a armed robbery subject that they're chasing. A man has robbed several people, stolen their phones. Several police cars are after him. Great footage that Rafio does not want to miss. They're going north on the boulevard, about 12 blocks east of us. They're going north, and we're trying to cut them off. Shit. I have to. It's very dangerous, that's for sure. I might get killed someday. Rafio approaches the police and finds himself face to face with them. Here we go. They're right there. They're right there. The first car is the fugitive. Behind it, a line of police cars. Rafio remains at their heels. He reaches a top speed of 130 kilometers in the middle of the city. A lot of police cars. It's probably about 20, 30. It's an armed robbery subject. They gotta get him. A few seconds later, all the police cars come to a stop. The fugitive has attempted to flee by foot. But the police, greatly outnumbering him, catch him and slam him violently against the car. And the bad guy is uh, in custody. For these armed thefts, this young man risks a lot. The law in Florida ensures a very heavy sentence, up to 30 years of prison. Rafio's caught all the action, and he seems very happy about it. Hey, what's up, brother? Things heated up, man. Nice catch. That's awesome. Two seconds. I know, right? Hey, that's awesome. It came out, and I started going. Nice. Guy's got the bad guy. It's been a good night for Rafio, and the evening comes to an end. It's 7 in the morning, and he now has to deal with one last delicate task, selling his footage to local television. Hey, Rafio, what's up? I'm all right. How you doing? Good, and you? Good, thanks. Hey, so I got a, uh, I got a two-for-one special going on this morning. You got a minute? You want to hear about it? Yeah, what you got? The first one is going to be a police officer that was hospitalized after being beaten up by a subject that he was chasing on foot. The officer is most likely going to survive. Okay, what's the other one? They have their chase in progress. The um, uh, vehicle speeding past my camera. For sure, for sure. So great video on that. Rafio puts his footage online. 
This morning he sold three stories to local TV for a little more than $500. But he makes much more money when he films stars, of which there are many in Miami. His greatest catch was two years ago. The night that Justin Bieber got arrested in uh, Miami Beach along with uh, his friend Khalil, a uh, rapper. That was my biggest day ever. Got up uh, $20,000 that night. On average, he earns about $7,000 a month, but he works almost every night. During the day, Miami becomes a city of pleasure, a dream destination where you can enjoy dozens of kilometers of turquoise beaches. 12 million tourists visit here each day. One of its busiest days is the 4th of July, a national holiday. Hundreds of yachts are out, a delightful moment, but also a ripe time for accidents between these powerful vessels. Grace and Joe work to limit these disasters. These police work in the Maritime Patrol. They work on Nixon Beach, a sandbar, a 15-minute boat ride from Miami, a place with shallow waters and parties. The music's so loud like this because everybody wants to hear their music over everybody else's music, and it's just one big party. Standing shoulder deep, many are enjoying themselves, an alcoholic beverage in hand. So many boaters out here that it does become a little bit dangerous. Uh, people want to drive their boats through here at, at a high rate of speed, and we have swimmers in the water. There's anchor lines from the other boats. Uh, and we just try to keep everybody safe. Not long after, Grace comes across a group of young people who are particularly hectic. They're trying to leave. And what I need now is all the safety equipment. There's no way there's safety equipment. How many people you got on board? 21. I'm not going to be a... 21. The reason I stopped you is because you're driving and you got all these people in front of you and you can't see where you're going. The They're vessel's right. overloaded. And the yeah, vessel's overloaded with people. You see how low it's riding in the water line? Sorry, sorry. Any movement of anybody on board here can switch you, move you, talk you over to one right. side or the other. Yeah, but we're still every week, man, so we know what we're doing, man. The pilot, who doesn't seem inebriated, according to the police, receives a fine for having so many people on board. Cameraman, cameraman, just do me. Okay, and all I'm doing is giving you a citation. Okay, it's a $90 citation. Okay, I want you guys to be at home safe. And you got a lot of people on board. Okay? You're ultimately responsible for your life. I know that. He's got to see, he's got to be able to see, okay? I'll see you. Stay tuned to the next episode. The group returns to the marina while Grace and Joe continue their patrol and pass through an isolated part of the bay. Oh, the pretty house. That's probably like 15 million right there. There's a smaller one on the inside selling for 12 million. An area of incredible luxury frequented by the world's finest. President Nixon used to have a house right here and that was President Nixon's helipad. Sometimes even President Obama comes here and has brunch with some friends that live on this island. But in a few minutes, Grace and Joe will leave this show of riches and come upon one of great distress. They called that they found a, an abandoned Cuban migrant raft in the area of, uh, out on the ocean side. Cuba is just across these waters, 300 kilometers from Miami. looking for freedom. Uh, Cuba right now is uh, a dictatorship, right? and it's a very poor country, so a lot of people are looking to cross over. Grace and Joe must check if there are migrants aboard and secure them. It looks like you're dead on. You're about two miles away. Yeah, it's about right, almost at 12 o'clock. Clear. On this makeshift boat, some migrants will have braved the ocean and its storms for several days. A small boat made with metal containers and a tarp and an old engine. See vessels this size and they'll be packed with 
with anywhere from two people to 20 people aboard a, a vessel like this. Obviously, you can see there's not much room in there. They have bottles and bottles of water. They never know how long they're going to be out at sea. The boat's passengers have probably been taken by people smugglers off the coast of Miami. It's a desperate attempt to make it to the U.S. by any means available to them. The Coast Guard intercepted almost 5,000 migrants out at sea in 2015, a figure which continues to increase. A few minutes later, a new radio call. A collision between two jet skiers. A young woman is injured and has lost consciousness. Firefighters are already on the scene, but their boat cannot get to the beach. The water is too shallow. You guys can come on board. The victims regained consciousness, but seem severely injured. Trim down, trim down, trim down, trim down. Oh, all good. She has strong pains in her head and neck. She must be taken to the hospital immediately. Her boyfriend, who is driving the jet ski, is extremely concerned. Marina, the ambulance is already prepared. For this accident, Grace and Joe's role is done. At the end of the day, they'll head back towards the city. And they're not the only ones. Today is the 4th of July, Independence Day for us. So at about 9 o'clock, we're going to celebrate with a big fireworks display. Everybody wants to be up close and get the best view. The There's a sand. few hundred boats here, at least 200 boats. Easy. Everybody from the sandbar came here. There's plenty of traffic, and the police officers take a tour. You're either going to have to be further back or in the crowd, but you can't stay right here. OK? Thanks. Thank you. And finally, everything's ready, and the show begins. I'm very fortunate to have the job that I have. I've been able to see these fireworks now for 16 years. This is my 16th fireworks show, the same spot on the boat. But after this national holiday, things go back to normal in Miami. The city is no stranger to another type of crime, which is particularly common here. Car theft. 8,800 vehicles are stolen every year, and often in highly violent ways. Like in the images from this hotel security camera. A man seizes a vehicle while it's being loaded and takes off at full speed. He crashes into six people. One person is seriously injured. To fight against this scourge, a special unit's been created. It's 6 p.m. In the north of the city, six men in this unit begin their day in a Cuban restaurant. <laughs> They're gathering strength for the night ahead. Chances are it's going to be a long night. You never know what's going to happen to police work. That's why we drink a little coffee. The detective Ray Curbelo is a former Army paramedic and has been in the Miami police for 27 years. A solid base of experience, useful in his pursuit of car thieves. Ray and his team have a well-established technique. They work in packs. With them, 
They carry all the information they have on the most recent stolen cars. Give me that according to the floor. The is still out, so we have those four cars that were taken somewhere. One was in the north end, so we might run into one or two of these. Get it going. All right, so let's go. Let's go and to find them, they roam the city in ordinary cars. I have recently uh, recovered two or three stolen vehicles and uh, carjackings. Uh, people who steal vehicles and commit carjackings, they come back and they dump the vehicles here. In many cases, they live here. That's the reason why they, they come home, so they can bail out and escape police. About 100 meters away, one of his colleagues asks for assistance. He stopped a car. He's curious about its expired license plates. Ray comes as backup to monitor the two men in the car. Yeah, that's on the car, man. I'm gonna pat you down. All right, don't be checking me. I'm gonna pat you down, man. Sure. Relax, man. All right, don't be checking me. Listen, up. put your hands on the car. Put your hands on the car. It's for your legs. In this mostly African American neighborhood, the interactions are tense between young people and the police. Do that in the white folks area. I'm not gonna take the man down and be worried about people killing people, bro. In fact, the car's not stolen. The young men simply didn't renew their license plate. They're let go with a warning. Let me tell you something. A few minutes later, the alert is more urgent. A man was stealing a luxury car. He's taken flight after seeing a police officer. Ray rushes over to help his colleagues. The car has been abandoned after a crash. The light's still on. This German sedan has indeed been stolen. To find the thief, Ray and his colleagues cover the entire neighborhood. Even a helicopter is mobilized and an MDD unit. After about 40 minutes, the police call off their search. The thief is nowhere to be found. He must have gotten refuge in one of the homes. Once they get inside the houses it's over. and Once you lose out. sight of them, you don't know exactly. Uh, you know they're there, but you know. We, we cannot we, get them. We can't get inside. In, in this case, in this house here, if you knock on the door, they don't open the door. Once they know you're the cops, then they won't let you in. In this particular case, they were unable to neutralize the thief. But Rain knows it. His mission is at risk. These criminals are often armed. He doesn't only rely on his bulletproof vest for protection. St. Michael's, he was sent the, uh, by God to take care of uh, the evil uh, spirits. He's a warrior. If they patrol with me, they always stay with me. And uh, this is what I believe. Every man has to believe in something bigger than themselves. A protection which could come in useful in the following minutes. One block away, one of his colleagues begins chasing a stolen car. Ray rushes to block the route of the thief. Yeah, take it See your hands. See your fucking hands right now. See your hands. Other officers are already on the scene. We have behind your back. Any weapons on you, man? Pull up on your pants. Huh? Come on here. Have a seat over here. Have a seat right here. It's pretty late. The car was stolen two weeks ago. It escaped police the first time. It's clearly fallen into the hands of experienced criminals. Take a look in there. In front, under the passenger seat, a semi-automatic pistol loaded with a bullet. It's ready to fire. But this is not the most shocking discovery. The patch over here, we're going to peel it off just to make sure that we don't have a bullet hole. Yeah, bro, it looks like a bullet hole. What does it mean? It means that it was probably involved in uh, some type of shooting, and apparently somebody shot back, striking the vehicle. Good, Good job, bro. Thank you, man. Good job. Appreciate it. Okay. In his fight against the traffic of stolen cars, Ray has tonight perhaps avoided another raid or a new shooting in Miami.
back at the SWAT team's training center. They're preparing themselves for an even more eventful day. They have to face a large scale terrorist attack. Today, it's a simulation, but this could happen at any moment. Just last June in Orlando, 300 kilometers from here, a man claiming to be a member of the Islamic State killed 49 people in a nightclub. Today in their exercise, the SWAT team must face a much more dangerous situation. Three terrorists have hijacked this yacht and are holding 19 people hostage. We're going to Turkey Point. That's where they want us. That's where they want us. That's where we're supposed to be. They want to crash their boat into this nuclear power plant, which is just 40 kilometers from Miami. The catastrophe would be major. For the SWAT team, it's a race against time. They must neutralize the terrorists in record time. One team's in the helicopter while a convoy urgently travels through the city to rejoin the police marina. Lieutenant Bailo leads the operation. Approach from the stern side. Uh, boarding the ship is not easy. They have the, the, the whole advantage. They have a sun deck. They have uh, a walkway around the second floor, and we're coming in through one way only. We want to move fast and hard on this. We're going to have to keep moving, keep that train going. In this simulation, they're using training ammo, which marks their targets in a bright color. They speed towards the boat. And for the simulation, the police has mobilized significant resources. On top of the yacht, there are five speedboats, three helicopters, 60 men in total. The approach time is critical. Exposed on their speedboats, they're an easy target. To protect them, in the helicopter, sniper follow the hostage takers. Be advised you have a delta order in case you have a shot. Verify you have a delta order in the event that you have a shot accessible. Forward, forward, forward. To destabilize the terrorists, they approach both sides at the same time. Each passenger could be hiding a terrorist and must be neutralized. The first hostage taker is found in the cabin, just one floor up. Subject down. He swiftly killed, but he had time to hit a SWAT officer. It's a delicate procedure. There are several passengers to neutralize. Hold here, hold here. Crawl out to me. Let me see your hands. Get on the ground. Flat on the ground. Do it now. Flat on the ground. Don't reach for nothing. There remains a crucial step. To eliminate the man threatening the captain, the first police officer is shot. The second shoots the terrorist. Subject down. One hostage taker remains, but they can't find his hiding place. They advance towards the bow. Hidden on the upper bridge, the final man is cornered. Subject down! In the end, the SWAT team takes control of the boat and averts a major catastrophe. But two police officers have been shot, marked in red. They've been hit. Fortunately, this particularly dangerous terrorist attack situation is not a daily norm. The majority of their missions concern drug trafficking. The elite unit will soon intervene here in the north of the city, a town filled mostly with people of Cuban origin. Seven, eight minutes out. 
Lieutenant Gonzalez and Detective Han have come here today to find the remainder of evidence that will authorize the arrest of a dealer. It must be said that one part of this town is infested with the drug trade. See that place over there where, where they're hanging out? Uh, we get some drug sales out of there. You can see some of the uh, users also. Further down the road, the scene is the same. Yeah, the white guy was the buyer. This guy's buying. <laughs> see it? Yep. He's got it in his hand. Holy Don't look, man. Come on. Give me, give me some credit where credit's due. This place is a shithole. Bro, selling from every corner. A fed-up local has indicated to them a drug traffic operation taking place in a house. And they indeed discover a dealer selling marijuana and cocaine. They track him down once and for all. This is the location with the blue tarp on top of it. You see the seller? That's one of the targets of the investigation. That's a target location. He was outside of the house. We know that he's there. We know that he's, he's doing his work so we can set up to do our, our buy later. Because Detective Han will try to buy drugs from him. All right, I'll All right. catch you uh, a little bit later. Thank you, Hani. All right, man. Thanks, LT. He meets a narc to go with him to the dealer. If they manage to buy, this will be the ultimate proof of drug trafficking, Literally, a vital uh, ingredient in Florida for obtaining an arrest warrant. The lieutenant follows the transaction with his radio. Source is out. He's going to be walking back to us now. OK. All right, let us know if it was a go or not. Yeah, it was good. OK, great. The transaction was successful. Gonzalez goes to find his detective. Um, he tried purchasing cocaine. Uh, they said they were out right now, that they don't always have it. He was able to purchase a seven of marijuana. Um, basically, this is the smallest package of marijuana that they'll sell from the location. With his evidence in hand, they can now involve the SWAT team. <laughs> Back at the SWAT headquarters, Sergeant Lee enjoys a moment of peace while he cleans his weapons. He awaits the intervention with an element of apprehension. For him, it'll be the last one. After 19 years on the SWAT team, he's leaving to become a shooting instructor at the police academy. I think I'm gonna to miss about the, the SWAT team is the, I guess is the surprise element of it, the adrenaline element of it. Surprise element is basically you, you have no idea what you're gonna get. So when I get, go on a call, every call is different. Am I an adrenaline junkie? Maybe I am. Will this mission give him the adrenaline he's looking for? He meets his team for a briefing. For this last intervention, Troy has chosen to be on the front line. Listen up. We're going to cross 103 Street. We're going to make a right-hand turn onto Northwest 101 Street, and we're going to be approximately 10 seconds out, all right? It's a short route. Entry team is going to be Cardina Shield, Chrome One, Dor Jimenez, followed by myself. Ride the skates from here. Good. Troy Lee embarks for the last time. A few minutes later, and it's time to attack. The two men guarding the house give up without resistance. The dealer is arrested without a fight. It's Troy Lee's final mission, and it was nothing out of the ordinary. When we made entry, everybody complied. Everybody showed us their hands. They got on the ground. Every time we leave a mission and nobody gets hurt, that's a good mission. For the narcotics agents, the take was modest. 700 grams of marijuana, which is not a significant amount for a drug dealer. Of course, we always want more, but we got a de decent amount of uh, marijuana, some pills uh, throughout the house. So it went pretty well. The SWAT team heads back to their HQ. In Miami, over the course of a year, this elite unit performs up to 200 operations.